All right, Webster, in the time we got with you, and I want to jam in some calls as well. I got to have you back up. Time just flies. I'm going to jump a couple hours. Plus, I know you just finished two books. One on the roots of this cartel and one on their modern activities. But as all this deteriorates faster and faster, and they still prance around saying globalism is the answer, when clearly their system of globalization engineered all of this, whether by hook or by crook, you know, they're the progenitors of the, of the problem that we're under. And then we have Geithner running around saying, don't worry, the dollar is saving the Chinese. Laugh at him. That's right. in the news. And then the dollar starts plunging even further. Uh, I tend to agree with you. I mean, I believe they engineered it because they have their own IMF World Bank documents, but it's kind of like them. Delusional liars tend to start believing their own bull their own horse crap, Correct. and I, I really think they've lost control, and these psychopathic thieves uh, have endangered the entire shooting match. I think that's true. Uh, I think we're headed uh, probably towards some kind of uh, acute uh, turn for, of, of this crisis. In other words, we've been living in this fool's paradise with a mugs rally, a sucker rally going on in Wall Street, but notice uh, the state of California is collapsing, General Motors is bankrupt, Chrysler is bankrupt. The uh, Toyota car sales are down 40 percent in the most recent month. Um, unemployment continues to uh, to be very, very high. There was about half a million jobs lost per month every month. So that's going to be a disaster. Now the the question is, when do you reach the breaking point on Obama? Historically speaking, the previous uh, case of the 100 percent Wall Street puppet president, owned by the Trilateral Commission and Brzezinski and Rockefellers and so forth, was of course Carter. Carter reached his peak right about now, so to speak, the, uh, the end of April, beginning of May, mid-May 1977, and after that, Carter began to, to slide into a, uh, into a decline. And I think that's, there are signs that that's happening with, with Obama, the, the left liberals in particular. If you happen to see this campaign for America's future, this Borosage, Kuttner, Vandenhoevel group, the left liberals, sort of the limousine liberal, Learjet liberal types, right, merging into parts of the Obama administration. They're very uncomfortable with this idea of the 13 trillion going to Wall Street and a few hundred billion, the crumbs, going, going to the rest of us. So I think there's a big problem there. The question is, if you're going to attack Obama, you've got to attack him from the left. This is the big thing. Look at Obama. He loves to play himself off against Limbaugh, against Newt Gingrich. No, their own memos say that. They say, we want to make this about like running for office against Limbaugh. Limbaugh isn't running jack squat. Limbaugh loves the attention, but he knows they're using him uh, as a distraction. And, of course, as an egomaniac, he can't get enough of it. The, the critique that really hurts Obama is, is a left-wing critique. Now, you've got to develop some idea of, of, of an alternative policy, and it can't be, you know, cut the budget and let everything liquidate into a you know, general bankruptcy, because that... That's just going to kill people. Nobody now, they've already hyperinflated things to the point uh, we need to arrest the bankers and direct all this fiat stuff into real industry so we get something. Let me just say one sign of life, and it's just, I'm, I'm surprised by this, but, you know, Michael Moore, right? Michael Moore, we, he's been around for a while. People know him. Uh, if you look at his essay on General Motors, you will see that there are signs of life there. In other words, it's tinged with this gangrene economy stuff. It's tinged with this alternative energy claptrap, but what he says is, you've got to go back to the 1942 conversion of General Motors to war production, and then the reconversion uh, in 1945-46 back into civilian production, and what could you reconvert those factories to do, right, because you've got unemployed workers, 14 more General Motors factories closing, dozens of factories now idle, hundreds of thousands of unemployed auto workers, what could you build, and he says, well, you could build bullet trains. Now, bullet trains would be the, you know, the Japanese trains, but, of course, they're obsolete now. We want maglev. We want magnetic levitation railways where you go from, from Los Angeles to, uh, to New York in three hours in a, uh, in a, uh, a, a rail car. Instead, they're going to build cruddy local slow trains to nowhere with people so poor they can't even afford to get on them instead of super trains to cities where you say, oh, I'm going to shoot down to Dallas on the hour train instead of four hours in a car. But they won't do it, man. They will not do it because it's yeah, a good this idea. Is what you got to fight for. And I'm, I'm very encouraged to see that some of these ideas are floating around. So Michael Moore says you can build uh, mass transit, you can build maglev. And then he says alternative energy. He wants to build windmills. Well, the windmills are crazy. 
build nuclear reactors, build 100 high temperature well, nuclear. Let's back that up. Let's back that up. You can't build windmills because for the amount of power they generate and their cost, there's not a way to transfer the power without power loss. For those who don't know, power lines lose power. So the substations to hold that power are too cost prohibitive from the wind centers of the country to deliver it to major mega cities. Now, wind is good in a localized small town setting. Well, it can be used for specialties when there's no other alternative. But generally speaking, you're going to put more energy into the windmill than you're ever going to get out of it. So there are some places where you need that kind of thing. But as a base load approach to an industrial economy, it's a bad joke. It's, it's not a primary thing. driver. But listen, before we get out of time, and I know you want to get into solutions, Webster, but I think people need to understand what's going to happen because clearly none of these are being implemented. And even if people don't agree with your solutions, they've got their own. Nothing but everything for Wall Street into the black hole, everything clearly Pentagon, Northcom standing by to deliver us directly into the mall. And we've got Zolik, uh, warm stimulus, sugar high, won't stem unemployment. So what's this doublespeak? Top neocon World Bank President Robert Zolik, literally an Israeli agent publicly, warns policymakers that fiscal stimulus plans are insufficient to turn around the real economy and rising joblessness threatens to set off political unrest across the globe. And then he goes on, so, so, so why are they making statements about political unrest knowing it's going to happen when they've engineered the policies knowing it would do that? Well, there, have, there has been a lot of political unrest. There's been a, a big uh, ferment in the trade union movement in, in Europe. There have been there have been various kinds of riots and things like this around the world. And that's why I'm saying the program is absolutely critical. In other words, you can get a mass movement going under these circumstances, but if the Democratic Party collapses, you've got to have a, a, an actual program to get out of the Depression. I would say that's the golden question of right now. In other words, the most precious wisdom in the world is, how do you actually get out of a Depression? And I believe I know, and that's what I put into this book, Surviving the Cataclysm, which people can get from, uh, from Progressive Press and then I hope soon from, uh, from you. Um, yeah, folks, just Google surviving the cataclysm was for driven partly. Resistance, okay? A couple of other things going around. Uh, the French government, of all people, the French government has now proposed the Tobin tax, the securities transfer tax. In other words, something like a 1% sales tax on Wall Street bankers as they do their trillions of dollars. I only support that of a gentleman by the nations, not by the very bankers themselves. Well, it's, a, it's implemented against the bankers themselves. I mean, they're the ones who pay it. No, but you and understand the U.N. Would, yeah. and the bankers have been proposing a Tobin, but on our money transfers to bring in a global no, no, no. model. On derivatives, on, on, on the rest of their speculation. Another example, the, the banks, now, uh, they have now bid the price of oil up to $67, $68. Now, remember who this is. This is Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, and they operate through the London ICE exchange. You can see it. They bid it last year. They got it up to $150, $160. They're trying to do it again. So that's their thanks. You bailed them out with the TARP. Your tax money went to Goldman Sachs and, and Morgan Stanley, which are now banks. But, of course, as zombie banks, the only thing they do is derivatives and proprietary. And now they're going to jack up energy so they all make tens of billions. They've got uh, to drive the price of, of gasoline and, and oil up to make some of these crazy windmills look more, more plausible. So that's what they're doing. Uh, by the middle of last summer, you were paying $1 for every gallon of gas. $1 went to Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley alone. So if you don't like that, what you've got to do is take measures to stop speculation. 100% margin requirements, position limits, and special status for speculators, which is inferior to the status of users and, and hedgers. Now, the other aspect of it is a political resistance. And I, I don't know if you've talked about Sri Lanka, but this seems to me to be very, very... Very interesting. The U.S. and the British, over decades, fomented this Tamil Tiger revolt. These are terrorist butchers of the worst kind, right? Suicide bombers, female suicide bombers. They, they uh, pioneered all this stuff. The question now is the Indian Ocean as the Chinese lifeline, right? The Chinese need to get oil from the Persian Gulf, oil from Sudan, raw materials from Africa. So the Indian Ocean, the arc of crisis in Brzezinski's terms, is now, now a key place. In the middle of this, you had this, this terrorist army sponsored by the U.S. and the British, the Liberation Tigers, and they have now been annihilated. Their, their chief, this guy Prabhakaran, has been uh, liquidated. And what you saw, a, a very interesting epiphany, right, the moment where you really see what's what in the world. As the Sri Lankan army closes in on these awful, awful terrorists, the uh, British Foreign Secretary, David